All right, there we go. My name is Tim, and today we're going to be talking about the many ways to trigger content within Signage Live. Today we're going to be kind of focusing on everything in any way possible about when it comes to triggering content within Signage Live, and there's several different ways to do it depending on what you're looking to achieve. We're going to dig into that today and just talk about the different options there are for you and maybe why you would be using those. Uh, so if you haven't been on this live stream before, uh, my name is Tim and we'll be taking you through some different elements within Signage Live on a weekly basis, every Thursday, 3 p.m. BST, which it is right now. Uh, so with today's topic of content triggering, we're just looking at all of the different ways that this could possibly be achieved. So we're going to take you through a bit of an overview from a high level and then we'll go and demonstrate a little bit of how that's set up within Signage Live and talk around some of the case studies and, and how this is achieved and why this is achieved out in real life in the field. So to start off with then, what is triggering? Well, content can be triggered with Signage Live in many different ways. They can be triggered locally or via a web trigger uh, API and triggers allow you to change content displayed on the screen via a whole range of choices. So it's the ability and the, the, the decision to change content by some kind of trigger, whether that be outside of the player itself or connected to the player, or it could be something that is web-based, which we'll walk you through as well. Uh, some of the examples that we'll talk about today in triggering is, is why would you need triggering? To give you a few examples of that, it could be that you're in a retail space and you want someone to be able to go up to the screen and interact with it or have touch screen uh, that, that is uh, instance when you click the button or push on the screen for the first time. It could be that you've got a lift and learn device where you want to lift up a product and then it tells you more about that product on a shop front. In other situations, it could be for emergency messaging, being able to trigger a range of players to display emergency content at a whim. And we'll talk about the different instances in terms of time frame, because obviously there's a difference between web triggering when it comes to emergency messaging versus just changing your content within Signage Live. So what is a local trigger? Well, simply put, a local trigger is a trigger that is promoted or prompted on the player itself. So it's not done away from from the device it's not on the cloud it's something that you're plugging into the device itself or, or, or whichever hardware you've chosen when it comes to digital signage some examples of that are just things like keyboard interrupt that's probably the the most you know kind of simple to be able to do you put a usb into your device you hit t for example on that keyboard and it will trigger the content change from a layout design to a playlist uh, Nextmosphere is another one that I've put on there. You can actually see the Nextmosphere device here right, looking on your right hand side of your screen. Nextmosphere offer a whole range of different ways to interrupt content, whether it be a button push or whether it be a lift and learn or RFID or something that triggers a change of content that could be built into a product or built into a display item that you then lift and then it triggers that content. Or you push a button and then you get the, the content that's relevant to an image that that button is associated with. TV remote is another really interesting one. So a lot of the system on chip screens that are out in the market right now have the ability for you to almost reprogram the one to nine buttons on the keypad to be a different piece of content within your digital signage. So although you can trigger that locally, if you have, let's say, 10 screens and you want one of those screens to be triggered by the button on the remote, you can pre-plan that all within Signage Live and each of them will work independently from each other. A really useful tool because there's no additional hardware needed. Obviously, you receive those remotes with the, with your, your TV, so you don't have to go out and buy additional hardware. And it's very easy for people that are using system on chip, digital signage and retail when out of office or sorry, went out of hours to actually do some training or obviously given the current climate, maybe some health and safety tips or whatever it might be in that terms. Uh, down at the bottom is almost anything. I mean, there are a whole host of options. We won't be able to go through every single option out there, but most likely if you want to trigger that content within Signage Live, we can do that and we can assist you with doing that as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit today and we will walk you through what this actually looks like uh, when it comes to making that content for the first time or setting it up within Signage Live. But the experience within Signage Live is pretty much identical across the board. When it starts getting unique is when we start talking about these devices you could potentially tap into. So juxtaposed to that, what is a web trigger? So we've got our local trigger and that's our, our player and then the device that is triggering that, whether it be a remote. A web trigger is slightly different where actually we're, we're grouping a selection of players, maybe it's just one or maybe it's thousands of players, to trigger content all at identical times or in different subgroups, depending on how you want it to run it. You can see on that image on the right there, we've actually got a UI with a selected interrupt. So you could have earthquake warning, fire alarm, 
goal. You know, there's a whole different range of options that could trigger this. And we've designed a UI on here that's available on a mobile that you could go and tap, tap into. But the options are completely unlimited. You could have a web trigger that triggers based on one of your APIs on your service. So if you already have, you know, a system in place or a sales system in place, let's say, and you hit a KPI, well, as a, you, know, you reach your KPI, you reach your goals, you could have that trigger on the playlist automatically without anyone actually intervening with that. Web triggers are definitely beneficial for things like emergency messaging, because rather than changing a playlist, i.e. within Signage Live, going to that playlist and making a, an amendment, you have anywhere between one minute and 24 hours for that content to take uh, effect. That's obviously dependent on what you choose to do within Signage Live. A web trigger diverts and goes past that. It's a different API that actually runs that, and it is an immediate trigger change uh, within seconds. So it's ideal for immediate messaging without delay, in essence. And that's why we kind of find find that this often gets ended up used for things like, you know, uh, events or for for corporate emergency messaging. So I've got this video that I want to show you through just to show you what web web triggers looks like. And this is our, our Mark Benson, our CTO, who will walk you through this with a item called a button or BTTN device, which is in essence just a, a Wi-Fi button that is battery powered. You put the batteries in it. You connect it to your Wi-Fi, and then if you hit that button, we're triggering. This is just a really good example, I think, of the unlimited scale of what you can do with triggering and what options there are out there. So I'm going to play this video, and I'm going to keep myself quiet, and then we'll, we'll come back to the next step after this video is finished. Hi there. Welcome to this video from Stylish Live. Today, we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to connect third-party applications, sensors, and devices to the Stylish Live Web Triggers API. Web Triggers, as the name suggests, is a way to trigger content over the internet. With web triggers, you simply need to set up interrupts on your Sunage Live players. This will pre-cache the content ready for you to trigger. Within the web triggers application, you can group your players so you can trigger individual and single players. Web triggers allows third parties to create applications using our API. Alternatively, you can trigger within our user interface, or you can use third-party applications, such as what we're going to demonstrate today, which is Button. Button is a physical button. It's a Wi-Fi connected button that allows you to trigger third-party services to do actions. So you can trigger things such as if this, then that, Zapier, email, or as we're going to demonstrate, APIs. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how we set up button to connect to our API and then give you a quick demonstration of it actually triggering. So here we've already added our button to um, the button interface. We click action. Within the action, you can see we've already set HTTP. We've added the API URL, the post data type, and the data that's going to get sent over to our, to our API. You simply click Save and hit the button. And once that's connected out to the web, the screen behind me will all trigger. As you can see here, we've got a nice fire alarm. To build your own power-ups and integrations with web triggers and some of our other APIs, please visit build.sunnislive.com. Thank you very much. So that's, that's a really quick example, and uh, it, it's, it's good to visualize kind of exactly what we're talking about here. So that, that's uh, why I wanted to show you through that. I'm going to go back onto my presentation mode here. There we go. So let's, let's just kind of review what we have here when we're talking about triggers. So we've got a couple of different ways that this could be input into the player. The reality, it doesn't make too much difference because it's the same experience, but you can have serial input, GPIO, which is your button pushes, relays, any GPIO hardware. Keyboard, um, as I said, more standard, uh, for, especially for testing. Everyone has a keyboard to go and test with. Local triggers, so things like Kramer Control, Crestron, Fire Alarms, basically any service or software that you've got out there. Web triggers, and again, that emergency messaging that we've talked about. So going on to the next thing uh, that I wanted to mention, we've got something else, which is an, a, an RTE or real-time event. So in essence, the RTE is a trigger that occurs when a piece of content is played on the device. So this feature is currently available on the bright sign and the Electron devices, which include PC uh, and Mac OS. Uh, and this can trigger either HTTP or serial. And we'll, we'll walk you through what that experience looks like within Signage Live in a second. So an RTE can trigger the transition from a playlist to a layout, uh, or it could transition from one layout to another layout. It's all about when a specific piece of content is displayed, that's when the, the, the alteration of the content happens. So it can either be triggered to run for a particular duration. So let's say you've just shown an advert about beans, and then you want to show the next piece of content. We've talked about it. Let's go into a full playlist about 
beans or whatever it might be and you can have that run for five minutes and then return or 30 seconds and then return or you could have it just play to the duration of that asset and then return back to the original content now rtes actually do give you the ability to do other things and send that command outwards so let's say for example if you wanted uh, when a particular asset plays in a screen you wanted to light up a room in a different color that matches that advertisement this is what the rte ability does and again it's http or serial that can connect out from that asset and when that asset displays it triggers that that real-time event so a slightly different version of triggering because we're not talking about changing the content within signage live we're actually talking about potentially speaking outward to other devices when content is displayed from signage live so real times events is the other part of that slide that I showed you a moment ago. You've got the player and real times event could be TCP, uh, HTTP or serial. Uh, so things like AV equipment, video switches, audio equipment that could be triggered based on an asset playing on a player. Uh, and then, you know, likewise with things that we've done with QVD, any CALP and the ability to display that alteration of content based on information that we have. Same thing with serial. And then we're talking again about Nextmosphere and AV equipment again. The other one that I want to talk to you about is kiosk mode. So kiosk mode is slightly different again, but what we're talking about is interrupting the screen specifically for a touchscreen interrupt. So kiosk mode allows you to be able to have your attract loop content. So let's just say you've got uh, you know, a, a promotional campaign to say, hey, come and check out our new product or hey, come and check out our new, new meal option or whatever it might be. And when the user walks up to that screen and touches it, it's then gonna replace that content with whatever else content you want to display. Often, these are things like interactive menus, information boards, room booking, wayfinding, anything that's then uh, HTML5 or an X, uh, EXE uh, application that you can then interact with with the touchscreen to allow you to filter more down into data. And obviously for things like uh, interactive menus, you then go and select your items, you then go potentially put in your payment method or hit confirm and then go and pick up that product at the, at the checkout. So it's all about building these experiences. And again, you can set your own expiry time for that. So let's say a user decides halfway through that they need to go and do something else and they need to come back in a moment and they didn't complete their order uh, or they have completed their order and they're now done with the service, or done with the interaction. You can then set a period of time where that inactivity will then trigger going back to its original content. So those, those are a whole range of different ways that we can approach triggering. And there is other options around there. We're not going to go into every single one of them uh, in detail, but it just gives you that flavor of what Signage Live is capable when it comes to triggering, whether it is individually on a player that must run offline, must have all of these ab abilities, maybe has a kiosk or an inter interactive touchscreen attached to it, or maybe it's something much, much larger on kind of a global level of change or emergencies when, which need to be done immediately or to the other level of saying, well, actually, I've got my piece of content on Signage Live and I would like that to trigger something else as well. So those are our, our options when it comes to triggering. And now let's just take you through a little bit of how we achieve that within Signage Live. So if you already have Signage Live or you already have a demonstration account or you're using Signage Live regularly, this is how you do that. So we go over to our Signage Live dashboard, which we're on it here. And we would have obviously already created our content. So whether it be a playlist, whether it be a layout, whatever it is you're going to be using as a trigger. And we go down to our publisher. Now, the first thing that I'll talk about is most of the local triggers here. So normally when we're publishing content, we'll say, well, when do we want this content to play? It's either gonna be when nothing else is scheduled, which is our kind of evergreen behind the scenes piece of content that turns up if we've forgotten to plan anything else. And then you've got the between the chosen dates and times, which is saying, well, actually, I'd like to run this content regularly during these intervals. If we're talking about kiosk mode, this would be the piece of content that is your attract loop or the content that the, the, the signage live experience goes back to by default. Then you've got as a result of a trigger. Now in here, you've got your start trigger and stop trigger, and these will all be available depending on what kind of trigger it is you're trying to set up. Importantly, you're gonna to have to select which key press you want to use. I know uh, off the top of my head that things like interactive uh, touchscreen require the T interrupt to then be the touch on that screen, but there are a whole range of different options on there. So if you've got a keyboard, you've obviously got A to Z at the alphabet to choose from. You've got zero to nine here, which would be associated with your remote for your uh, for, for your uh, SOC, number pad options, GPIO settings, and then a whole host of other options here for specific hardware devices. We've got information and documentation specific on all of these if you do want to get them set up. But let's say today I'm going to set this up in a kiosk environment and I'm going to have it set to, ba, 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 to T. Then you've got the option for a stop trigger where actually what you want to do is have T again. 
And if we do that, then if I hit T, it will change to the interactive content. If I hit T again, it will stop that interactive content and return back to the original. This depends on what you want to set up. If you put none, then what you can do is say, well, actually, I want to set this to play to the duration either of the asset that we've uploaded. So we've actually made a playlist of five assets and we say we want to play all of these assets before we return to our orig original content. That's the default that we want. Or you can have a configured duration. So you might have a video file or a live stream or something that doesn't have a defined end period that you then want to configure to end at a specific time. So every time we hit that button, a video will run for five seconds and then return back to our normal content. For certain devices, you also have the option to decide whether you want to return to where you were in the original playlist. So your evergreen or your kind of standard content, you can enable the ability to return back to halfway through that playlist if that's where you were when you did the original trigger. That will be dependent on what you're looking to achieve. So bearing that in mind when you're looking at the hardware that you want to choose. Realistically, the rest of the process is exactly the same. So we say, well, what do we want to display? It's either going to be a, a media asset or a playlist, and then we can go and publish that out to the device that we want to send it to. Once you've gone through all of those steps, the content will then be downloaded and stored on the player locally. So regardless of whether it's content that's decided to be played now or content that's decided to be played at a trigger later, this content is stored on the device for two main reasons. First of all, capability of running offline. If for any reason the internet was to go out, it will continue to run, which is irrelevant to, to whether you do or do not have internet because the content's already there. And B, speed. We don't want to be downloading that content when you want to trigger it. It wants to be there ready to go when you hit that button. Web content, web triggers I won't be able to show you through today because there will be some development required to do that. And that more or less depends on what you want to achieve in terms of getting that up and running, whether it's connecting to one of your own sources or whether it's a button or whether we're using something else to in the middle to actually interact and deliver that trigger. The other one then just to show you through today uh, before we wrap up here is the RTE or the real time events. So if we go into the playlist editor here, we can go over as we would do normally when we're managing Sunch Live, and we can go and select an asset that we want to assign an RTE to. If I drag and drop my asset over there, let's just take this fire asset here and I double click on it. I then have the option to set up the uh, RTE. Let me just double click on it in here, sorry. In the asset within, within our, our manager, you can see here we've got the tab called real time events. Now, real time events will allow you to set up whatever it is you want to trigger either via HTTP or via serial. It will ask you if you want a custom event or if you want to grab one from the template. So if you've already created a template and you need to add this to new assets, you're not going to need to redo this process. We'll be able to store a template for you, which you can use over and over again. But if we select custom event, it then gives us the option of what kind of RT do we want? And this is starting to get a little bit more into the weeds of exactly what you are looking to achieve. But let's just say it's either going to be a serial interrupt where you can put in your board rate, parity, flow to control, all of the things uh, that will kind of dictate when you want this, where you want this data to be pulled from or what trigger you're going to be sending somewhere else. And likewise with the HTTP. You can then also choose whether you want to have a different trigger based on the asset starting or the asset completing. So we've just looked at asset download. So that's that's quite a, a unique one. But asset starting and asset completing. So do you want the room to change green when your green image turns up on the screen? Well, if you do, you probably want to do that at the start of the image because it wouldn't make any sense to do it at the end because once the asset has completed, it's not green on the screen anymore and it wouldn't match the aesthetic of the room as an example. So asset start would be a good option for that. Asset complete might be that you finished your video and or whatever's displaying on the screen and the end of the video is going to go, okay, you can now exit to the left-hand side of the room. And that's the point where the light would light up in that corner of the room. So you know where to go next. And these are just examples. And there's obviously a whole range of different use cases this, this would work with. The next one is asset removal. So let's say you've taken an asset away, you've taken an asset away from a playlist and you want to prompt a message to say that that message, that that piece of content is no longer there. Let's say you've had a, a high risk or an emergency alert on for the last week or you're at a, you know, a high stress point in the company, then you would put that asset on there to make everyone aware. And the day that you remove that asset, it would automatically trigger uh, a notification that that asset is no longer available, it's no longer needed and it's no longer on the playlist. So that's a couple of different ways to approach RTEs. In what we've talked about today, we're really talking about a whole range of different triggers. So if you if you do need any assistance or if there's a particular experience you're looking to put together, always reach out to us because we can assist you further. There are several different ways of approaching it. And there's not necessarily a one size fits all, but doing this does give you that whole carte blanche of being able to pick what you need. 
So that's more or less everything that I wanted to show you through today from RTEs, triggers, uh, interactive kiosks, web triggers, local triggers, whatever it might be that you're looking to achieve. Hopefully that video has been useful for you. Uh, this will be recorded and set and uploaded within our playlist, just like every other video. So if you want to come back and watch this later on, you'll be able to or share it with anyone that you need to. If there are any questions, I'm available now. So if you want to ask any questions, I will carry on the stream to ask, to get any questions answered. Other than that, if that's answered your questions, you don't have anything else, thank you very much for joining us again. We'll be back next Thursday with another stream, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you then.